we are going to begin on our landscape here with a very large brush and some titanium white paint. I just applied that in the center of my canvas and then with the same brush I went back and grabbed some very desaturated blue. I'm applying this blue around the edges of this white and kind of creating a vignette. Now, once I've applied it, I do go over the white to a point, but I'm being very loose with my brush. I'm not applying a lot of pressure, and that way that light, that white in the middle, is still being emitted. And the darker edges kind of draw the eye in towards the middle of our painting. From there, I'm going into the bottom here with the same brush and applying a very dark base layer for our ground. Now this is a brown, however it was mixed with a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. You know when you mix all of your primary colors together and you get this uh, kind of brown? That's really what this is with a little bit of black and white. So we really used all of our colors here and I'm just trying to get a fairly consistent initial application. From there, in the middle of the painting, I'm taking an orange and I'm just applying all of that. Now, this orange was created with a red and a yellow, however the brush is a little bit dirty, so you do get a little bit of that brown in there and it's kind of creating greens. So I like the diversity that it's creating. Sometimes when you don't switch, switch your brush, you can create a lot of unintentional diversity and it's really wonderful. From there, I'm being very light with my touch of the brush, and I'm slightly blending that orange up into the sky. The majority of the sky has dried, and so you kind of just have this transparent um, layer of orange atop what we had before. And I'm kind of creating a gradient of a myriad of different little tapping mixtures and whatnot, just to imply trees are very far away and getting lost within the light. So from there, I'm taking my smaller square headed brush and I'm just applying some areas where I think I'd like trees. You notice that as I get towards the outskirts of that cluster of foliage, it gets much brighter. That's because I'm A, running out of pigment on my brush, and B, I'm applying less pressure with my brush. And this again is just going to imply that these leaves are maybe a little bit farther away they aren't as in focus, you can't really see them, and it kind of just blends it into the background very naturally. From there, once I have the pigment applied, I'm taking a square-headed brush with a bunch of very random looking bristles that kind of go out in different directions, and I'm using a tapping motion to go over all of my tree areas. This is an aesthetic that I think really looks great with trees, and it creates a lot of random intricacies in it and that's really going to make it look a lot more real rather than using a square headed brush and having a lot of uh, square like shapes represent all of your leaves sometimes an implied dot like what I'm doing here with this brush is much more effective for rendering that sort of aesthetic so get creative with your brushes it's not all about using a stroke Sometimes a tapping motion, like what you see here, can be much more advantageous for the piece. So from there, uh, now that the bottom has dried to a good point, I'm going back in and I'm layering some darker colors along the edges. And much like the sky, I really want to create a vignette-like effect where the light is more in the center. And the idea is that the light's going to be coming through the sky, passing through the tops of the trees, and then illuminating this main portion of ground here in the middle. So now that I've done that and the eye is drawn more in towards the middle, I'm taking my square headed brush and I'm applying a mixture of oranges and yellows to this bottom area. And this is going to imply fallen leaves. Now we're going to need to do a number of layers as you can see because acrylic paint is fairly transparent and generally when you put a lighter color over a darker color it's going to dry very very dark so you need to do a couple of layers you need to add a little bit more paint 
but that's great because additional layering in acrylics generally leads to a much stronger aesthetic. From there, I'm going back to that same square headed brush with the random bristles, and I'm doing more of that tapping effect that I instigated in the top trees. This is going to keep the painting consistent, this is going to keep it cohesive, and I'm also working in some of these darker colors into the middle portions of my larger trees at the top. We are going to put a brighter orange atop all of these darker pigments, however this is going to create a nice base for us to work on top of. Sometimes you don't want a dark color in a certain area, but to get the light color to stand out and be strong in the way you want it to, you have to put a dark color on there first. So that also leads me into the topic of, and I try to bring this up frequently, your painting isn't going to look exactly the way you want at every portion of its creation. Here, for example, it looks like a complete mess. And I know that, and I planned for that, and that is completely fine. And sometimes you have to take your painting to that level to really get it to where it needs to be. So even if you're doing everything right, sometimes your painting will look like a mess. Don't get discouraged. Keep going. Keep learning. Every painting is a great lesson. And, you know, it's it should be a fun time, so don't let it stress you out. Just keep working on it, and you'll end up with something that you really care about and have an affinity for in the end. So with all of that being said, here you can see that I'm still just lightly dabbing on more trees in the top, and the paint is fairly diluted, so I'm getting different colors of trees, which is really nice. You don't always want all of your trees to be the same color. They're not all going to be orange, they're not all going to be yellow, they're not all going to be red or green. Having different mixtures and using dirty brushes can really help you accentuate all of that. Now that the bottom area has dried, I'm going back in and I'm just applying another layer because again, the acrylics do dry fairly transparently and I just want to ensure that we have enough light at the bottom there being kind of emanating outwards. So once I have all of the light on the bottom the way I want it, I'm taking my square headed brush, I'm using the edge, and I'm starting to imply a couple of trees. Now these trees are going to be at varying levels of depth, so some are going to be much farther away, some are going to be much closer, and that's really something to pay attention to on the ground. You'll notice they aren't all horizontally on the same level. I'm also creating more trees in the background, and as I'm doing that, I'm using less pressure with my brush, and I'm ensuring that as I run out of paint, I just make more and more strokes. The less paint you have on your brush, the more far back these trees are going to look, and it's really going to imply that it has a very full-looking forest. For the trees in the foreground, Make sure that you add additional limbs onto the sides of all of these pieces. Make sure that the trees are not all going straight up. And it's also great sometimes to have different branches overlapping one another. These are all little techniques you can implement into your trees to make sure they look more real. I'm also not moving my brush in a straight direction. It's kind of wobbling as I do a lot of the strokes. And that's just to ensure that no two trees look the same. In nature, things are not made by factories. They grow naturally in the wind and in myriad of different environments. And so they all need to be a little bit different from one another, just like the coloring. Diversity in your paintings is really what's going to make it look so much better. So with all of that being said, I'm now going back and adding more of my orange to the tops of all of my trees. And I'm just kind of trying to fill out all of these areas. I'm kind of changing the direction of my brush. You can see slight twists in it. And what that's doing is creating more inconsistencies in this dabbing motion and texture. So here, the clock, it's, it's starting to run out and I'm just applying as much orange as I can because I do want to brighten all of these trees significantly. However, you know what? I do cheat a little bit in this painting because I do run out of time and much like all of the other 10 minute paintings, I do add on about an extra three minutes and I'll show you what that looks like. 
But here I'm just at the point where I'm adding on highlights to everything that's already there. So there we have it at 10 minutes and here we have it at, I don't know, 13, 14. And I just added more highlights, more highlights. As the paint dried, I could apply a little bit more and more. And so you can really do a lot with a little bit of time. Don't be afraid to, you know, take out the brushes and all of that. You don't need an entire day to do this. You can do a lot in just half an hour. So thank you so much for watching and stay creative.